Ladies and gentlemen, a woman who I find to be one of the most arresting women who has ever lived on this earth, and a woman who's not afraid to be arrested, Jane Fonda. Oh, my girl. I'm so happy to see you. God, I'm so happy to see you too. I know I'm supposed to be asking you questions, but oh my God, I love you so much. Well, we've known each other for a long time. I mean, here I am sitting in a kind of a basement room that I fixed up and you're in a studio. You're really doing this serious and I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Can I show and share a TikTok that everybody has already seen and it went totally viral? Um, but it's you in quarantine. And I love this video so much because I think when things get heavy, you try to find the window of appropriateness to bring in a sense of humor. I mean, look at you. I, I love you so much. <laughs> I, it's just, this is so fun. Yeah. I've been to your house for a party, by the way. That was your parties. By the way, everybody, Jane Fonda parties are epic. I remember well, you came with Chelsea Handler. I did. She was in a terrible mood. I kind of also like separated and did my own thing. That's the thing. I'm a solo bird. You have a full blown disco in your house. It's like, it's got lights, like it looks like a disco. Yeah, well that was my ex-lover and a different house, and I don't do that anymore. But see what that relationship brought you, a disco. It brought me a disco and, the, and, and, and a few other things too. Recently you said um, that you're swearing off men. Can I please talk to you about this? Because I think I'm there and have been there for the last five years. Why am I here? Why are you here? What's happening? You're so young. I, you're too young to swear off anything. Every, you got to stay open to anything, Drew. I'm uh, I'm too old, so it it's very easy to swear off getting undressed, even in candlelight. Your argument, though, was so good. You were talking about your full life and your friends and your kids and your philanthropic endeavors and your work and your life is so full and Who I has think time it, yes this is where I've been at no listen I'm not closed for business but I have been exactly in that mentality for the last five years thinking I just don't have the bandwidth I don't know if I'm willing to open my I just don't I just I can't fit it in <laughs> well you can squeeze a little affair or two in there I'm all for it I, I, I love your whole life. I loved Jane in five acts. And yeah. when you're an activist and there are so many things going on and so many battles to choose, how do you choose one and have the courage again to go out there and get on the bullhorn about it? Let me give you a metaphor that may help you, okay? Because you and I and so many of, of us celebrities think a lot about what is our role in the crises? You know, do we have a right to speak out? Because we're attacked a lot when we do. But think of it this way. You know those those antennas that are on the top of mountains? They're, they're antennas that stick up. They're called repeaters. And what they do is they pick up the voices in the valley that aren't quite strong enough to make it up over the mountain. And they lift the voices up to give them a wider audience. So that's what you are. All you are is a repeater, so you just have to be as good a repeater as you can. Well, Time Magazine said that your book would be the most anticipated book of the fall. You were able to put into words the climate crisis that made it feel like there is hope. Well, there is hope. I mean, the scientists who lay out the dire warnings, they all say, but we can do it. We have, we have the technology to do it. We have the money to do it. We have everything that we need, except the numbers of people. We just need more people. One thing I've always loved and admired is a life truly lived. And I can't think of anyone on this planet who has lived a more extraordinary life than you. And, oh, and I think I'll always 
in the presence of greatness feel like I've never met you. I just stand there and stare at you in awe. But I do know you a little bit. I'm so happy to know you. You're talking like this is coming to an end. Is this over? I hope not. I suppose so. But I just know this. I'm not going to that deathbed without milking every moment and seeing <laughs> everything and telling everyone how much I love and admire them because I got to get out of this life knowing that I, yeah. I put my heart out there and you have had my heart my whole life and, oh, and will continue to do thanks so. Thanks, This is going to be a huge hit, this, this show that you're doing. I'm really happy for you. Thank yeah. you. You're ensuring that by your presence because your lifelong credibility is because of everything that you've done and accomplished and not talked about, but action. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Time Magazine's the must read of 2020. Pick your copy up and find your hope. Hello, thanks. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye. I love you. Oh my God.